Auzubillahiminashshaitwanirrajim, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Let's, come, let's work out how the impairment loss is. The impairment loss should be charged to income statement unless the assets have been revalued previously upward. So now try to understand here. The PPP, property, plot and equipment, which, which method we are following? Are we following the cost method or we are following the revaluation method? So in both cases, if there is impairment loss, so the treatment is slightly different. So we must compare whether the impairment is compared with the uh, say, uh, revalued value or with the cost values. In which case the impairment loss can be charged, you know, in case of revaluation, the impairment loss will be charged to the revaluation reserve to reduce the assets, to depreciate historical cost and any additional loss going to be the income statement. It's simple that in case there is a revaluation reserve already on against that assets and if there is an impairment loss, so first of all we should write off this loss against that uh, reserves. And if there is greater impairment loss, then it will be charged with the income statement. And if, if let's say, uh, it, there is no revaluation, in that case, what we do, we total impairment loss will be charged to the profit and loss account. Reversal of impairment loss. It happens sometime that uh, previously we have impaired an asset, there was a loss, but due to things have changed, indicators have suggested, no, the asset's value is now this much, recoverable value is this much, so then we have to reverse the impairment loss also. Now, again, there is a technical things, how we can revalue uh, re the assets and then how much uh, impairment loss is going to be reversed. In case of review, review in future years, indicates that the asset is no longer impaired because of the recoverable value is of the asset is higher than the carrying value. In that case, the impairment loss may be reversed. Now, in this case, the entry will be simple. We reduce the depreciation, uh, accumulated depreciation and credit the recovery of impairment loss. And I suggested that uh, if impairment loss is uh, on a revised, revalued assets, then it will be charged to revaluation. The revaluation, uh, the re uh, reversal of impairment loss can be recognized in the income statement to the extent that the original impairment was charged there with the exception of goodwill and it is not acceptable to reverse any impairment of goodwill. Now this is again requires some explanation. Let's say impairment loss is 10,000 and you find that uh, reversal is of 15,000. So you cannot reverse 15,000, you can only reverse 10,000. So it's limited. Now, see this small example. Carrying amount is, let's say, 200,000. There are two, you know, A and B. 200,000 and 200,000. Fair value, less cost to sell. 180, 180. Same. Value in use, 250,000, 175,000. Now, we have to compare first 200 with 180 and 240. Uh, 205,000. Uh, in and second case. Now look here, in first case, our value in use is greater than the cost to sell. So it means we have to compare value in use with 200,000. Now in this case, value in use is greater, so there is no impairment. So there is no adjustment required here. Now in the other case, it was 200,000, 180, now 175. So now we have to compare fair value after uh, on sale is 180 and value in use is 175. So we have to select 180 and compare with 200,000. So there is a impairment loss of 20,000. See, so since value in use is greater than a fair value, so use of compare value in uh, use and carrying amount, which is greater than the carrying amount, there is no impairment, no adjustments. But in the other case, Impairment is there of 20,000. So we simply debit impairment loss and credit accumulated depreciation. So basically impairment loss is as good as, good as additional depreciation. Now the reversal, 
Look, in the second case, when we have, you see, there were 20,000 uh, impairment lost in the previous. Now, we have the carrying value again the same, but less accumulated depreciation further after two years' time. The depreciation we charge, so carrying value now is 144. Now, impairment test at the end of the year, the recoverable value is 160. Now, here you can see the recoverable value is 160. Since how it is count, recoverable value again the same test, sale value compared with the use value. Since the recoverable amount is greater than the carrying amount, therefore there is a reversal of impairment loss that is 160 minus 144, so there is 16,000. Now, how much balance we have in the impairment loss? We charge to the profit and loss account that is 20,000. Now, it's 16,000. So, in this case, we debit the accumulated depreciation and we credit the recovery of impairment loss. Now, this impairment loss is going to be profit and loss account. So, this is how the impairment loss is recovered, reversed. So, that is only if there is a recovery. Thank you very much.